Hi there, it's Paul here from theengineeringmindset.com. In this video, we're gonna look at the refrigeration cycle and the basics of how it works. We won't go too much into the maths and physics in this video. It's more of a beginner's guide or a fresher course if you haven't done it for a while. Uh, but in future videos, we will delve a bit deeper and we'll look at some calculations and even size the unit. So to get our updates, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below or like and share the video if you found it useful. Also leave your comments in the section below. So the refrigeration cycle, basically it's a fluid passing around a length of pipe, this pipe here, and it runs between four main components. Uh, the fluid that runs between these is known as a refrigerant, and it will come in a canister that looks a bit like this one here. This is refrigerant R134A, and uh, it's a really common refrigerant. So inside this canister is the refrigerant, is the compressed gas, and that is injected into this system and it will flow between them all, uh, all the components. So if we imagine that this is the refrigeration cycle of a split air conditioning unit, uh, you know, a typical one that's used to cool a room in a, an office or a home, uh, or even the fridge, it's pretty much the same system as well just scale down a bit. So to cool that room down, what we need to do is we need to collect the heat from one area, from the area, from the room, and then we need to dump it somewhere else. So to do this, we send the refrigerant around and the four components will, will help that pick up the heat and, and dump it. And what these four components will do is change the temperature and the pressure uh, of the refrigerant and that is how the uh, cooling and heating is produced. So the four main components we've got in the refrigeration system, and these are essential, it has to be in every system uh, for it to work. And the first component is the compressor. And that looks like that. And uh, a real life compressor uh, will look a bit like this one. You see that on the back of fridges or if you've had the chance to look inside a split AC unit, uh, that'd be one of them. I'll leave that for a minute. The second component is the condenser, this unit here. That's usually found outside the building, mounted on the wall. Uh, you know, it'll look a bit like this in the real world. And uh, then the third component we'll go to is the expansion valve. And that is this fin tube with this bulb and this valve here with the pipes in between. And a real life example of that will look something like this one. The final component, the fourth component in the refrigeration cycle is the evaporator. This unit here looks a lot like the condenser in this example, but it'll change, the, it won't look so much in uh, the real world most of the time and we've got an example of what one of those will look like. You've probably all seen these before, mounted on the walls inside the room, and this is where the cool air, cold air comes from. And it's also which takes the heat away. There are four main stages in the refrigeration cycle where the pressure and the temperature change. And these all occur within these four components. The first stage, in fact, let me just clear some of these off, make some room there. So the first stage, this happens at the compressor. And what happens is the refrigerant enters the compressor as a low pressure warm gas. After compression, it leaves as a high pressure hot gas. And I'll just draw those on there as well. Is the high pressure coming out of the compressor. So, 
for the compressor, when you compress a fluid, the volume decreases. And all the molecules that are in there get pushed closer together. The quantity is still the same. It's just more com compact now, compressed. When this happens, it causes the temperature to increase as well as the pressure. And as already mentioned, for the refrigeration cycle to work, you must be able to dump heat somewhere. The air in this somewhere else needs to be cooler than the surface temperature of the pipe on the condenser. If these two, if the, the surface temperature of the pipe and the air in the, around the condenser, if they were the same temperature, you wouldn't be able to dump any heat. So you wouldn't be able to cool the room down. So to ensure the pipe is hotter than the air around it, the refrigerant is compressed to a high pressure, which obviously increases its temperature. And that allows the heat to be ejected out of the condenser. Stage two happens at the condenser. The refrigerant enters the condenser from the compressor as a high pressure hot gas. It passes through these coils here where it loses its temperature and cools down. As it cools down, it begins to condense. It turns from a gas into a liquid, but it will be a, uh, a warm liquid now, a regular temperature liquid Still at high pressure though. And just to indicate that, we'll change its color just to a yellow. So it's leaving the coil there. There we go. So that's going to leave as a high pressure, regular temperature liquid. So the this condensed coil, you probably notice that there's lines in between them. What's happening there is these are well these are the fins of the condenser and they're sheets of metal which touch the pipe and that allows heat from the pipe to be carried away uh, off into these fins in the method known as conduction. Behind the condensed coil is this fan and as that rotates it's picking up heat uh, picking up air sorry from the, the ambient air around the condenser pipe and that's forcing it through the coils and that air will then pick up the heat through these fins and also off of the pipe and it will carry it away and allow that heat from the system to be dumped and that method is known as convection. Stage 3 happens at the expansion valve the refrigerant enters from the condenser as a high pressure, regular temperature liquid. The valve regulates the flow of refrigerant around the system and into the evaporator. It does this using a diaphragm. Let's just draw on here, coming from the condenser to the expansion valve. So inside the valve body here is a diaphragm. And the diaphragm is connected to a thermal bulb over here on the exit of the evaporator. And it's connected via a capillary tube, that thin tube, that thin tube just there. The thermal bulb sits on the exit of the evaporator, and inside there is another refrigerant. And that, depending on the temperature of the refrigerant leaving the evaporator, the refrigerant inside the thermal bulb will expand or contract. And this change in, uh, in pressure in that capsule will travel along the capillary tube and that will move the diaphragm up and down. The up and down movement of the diaphragm will allow more or less refrigerant to pass through into the next stage. So because the, uh, the valve restricts the flow, there will be less refrigerant on the exit on this next pipe here, the next section of pipe. There will be less refrigerant there, so there will be room for the refrigerant to expand. 
as it expands, the molecules within it move further apart, and this drops the temperature and pressure of the refrigerant, so it leaves as a low pressure cold liquid. And uh, we'll draw that on there as well. So as that leaves the valve and into the evaporator as a low pressure cold liquid. So stage four, which is the last stage in the refrigeration cycle, and this happens in obviously the evaporator. The refrigerant enters as a low pressure cold liquid and passes through the coil, which is a lot like the condenser, as you can see. On the other side of the pipe is the air of the room which needs to be cooled, and the fan blows this warm air across the coils. This allows the air to be cooled by the cold refrigerant within the pipe and it also allows the refrigerant to pick up that heat and carry it away towards the condenser where it will be dumped later in the cycle. As it does this, this refrigerant will begin to boil and it will evaporate from a gas, uh, from a liquid, sorry, into a gas. It does this because the, uh, the boiling point of refrigerant is very low. Um, R134A, which we looked at earlier, typical one, refrigerant, um, that has a boiling point of about minus 23 degrees. So you can see it doesn't, uh, doesn't take a lot of thermal energy for it to boil. Um, just change that color there. So as you can see, we've changed the orange now. Sorry about the gray, that wasn't the best choice, I suppose, but you can see what's happening here. And uh, so as the evaporator boils the refrigerant inside and it carries it away as a low pressure warm gas, and this will be sucked back into the compressor where the refrigeration cycle will start again. And it will obviously carry on and dump that heat it picked up from the evaporator. All the heat goes in there and then all the heat is dumped out there, out of the condenser. And that's it. That is the basics of how the refrigeration cycle works.